Hey, welcome back. This is News File, your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. And my guest, seated in the studio, Samuel Atacha, MP, Bwakwa South, and Chairman, Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament. Dr. Kwabna Donko is MP Pro East and former Minister for Power. Dr. Justice Shremsai, who is lecturer, Constitutional Law, Gimpa. Um, law school will also join us now right not for this first segment but in the next segment and we are also have Ben Boachi who's executive director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy ASA gentlemen good morning and thank you for joining us this morning right so we want to understand what is happening as far as the electricity company of Ghana and the PURC are concerned. They issued an ultimatum, orders, with timelines for the um, ECG to comply with. The ECG appears to have complied with some of the orders, but not all of them. The part that the public has been expecting is a timetable. The ECG says they have stable national grade. That clearly explains that they want to say there's no need for a load shedding timetable. They have said that the problems are localized faults that you are encountering. And therefore, if you have any issues, call them. Pick your call, your phone, wherever you are this morning, if you are in darkness, and call them. Or if your area has been suffering this doom saw or whatever you call it, unstable power supply, erratic power supply, call them. The hospitals that have been complaining about the circumstances in which they can't even decide when to do surgeries because they are unsure what might happen, please pick your phones and call the ECG. Let's see what the response will be. But what does the ECG say? When he says, call us, we will fix the problem. And yet it is issuing releases, explaining to sections of the public that your outages are as a result of something and they are working on it. Should they still call you? Begin with you, Dr. Kopnadonko. What's your understanding of what is happening? Well, essentially... When you deregulate, you need a regulator. When you liberalize, you need a regulator. The regulator is the referee. The regulator looks at all the angles to the situation and then takes a decision. And in our context, we have two regulators. We have the PURC, which is the economic regulator, and we have the Energy Commission, which is the technical regulator. If a regulator issues orders or directives, the entity or the person at the end of it should comply. If you can, for any reason, can't comply, you immediately state, go back to the regulator and state your case. Or sometimes you can go to court to quash the orders of the regulator. That's right. This is what happens in uh, a regulatory framework. You see, regulation is a craft. And it is important we understand this. The PURC is there to protect the interests of consumers, the interests of producers, and all the players along the value chain. So the PURC is really the referee. And so when the referee issues another, and it is legal, you have to comply. Mm -hmm. If you don't comply, you are fined. The entity can be fined. And so they, it is not for the ECG to say we have a stable ne uh, national network or transmission network, and so they won't comply or decide to choose where they comply and where they do not comply. In any case, ECG is not responsible for the national interconnected transmission system. It what is, is that? NIFS. It's Greco. It is Greco that is responsible. So you don't issue statements 
on things that you are not responsible. So, do I understand you to say that the order should be directed to Greco, Greco instead? No, please, to ECG. To ECG? Yes. If it is not in control, why should the order be directed see, the at The transmission it? system is different from the distribution system. The transmission system, to use the local balance, is just like Kayaye. You give the Kayaye a load to carry, and the Kayaye delivers the load from the point contracted to the other point. If the load is half load, the Kayaye will carry the half load. If it's full load, it will carry the full load. So you can't blame the Kayaye for bringing you half load. Because mm. that was what the Kayaye was charged with. Gritco is the transmission company. It will only take to the distributing companies, and there are two of them, if you ignore uh, Enclave Power, which is a small private sector entity. It's basically Grico and Net, uh, sorry, ECG and Netco. Those are the two distribution companies. So they have contracts. What Grico does is to wheel the power contracted and the power supplied to their substations for them to, for them to take to us. Over. Yes, to us. So how do you blame me if I do not have enough power, if I'm not given enough power to wheel? So are they really being non-compliant when what they tell you is that it is not that they are shedding power, but these are things that are unpredictable. They are localized outages. How can you have a timetable to that? That is not factually correct. You see, at the scale, I can understand when one transformer goes off or a transformer is loaded and some of the modern ones will automatically switch off if they are overloaded, etc., or browns out. That I can understand. However, when on this week, on the average, you were shedding at peak 400 megawatts, it cannot be lo localized. That cannot be localized. Look, you say you're, you are changing or working on your transformers, about 900 of them. You have over 32,000 transformers. So how can work on 900, around 900, have this national impact? It cannot. I can understand ECG, their commercial entity, and let us never forget that ECG is a limited liability company. That is so. Pure commercial focus. The Ghanaian state wanted ECG to be a company and establish it as a company. So, of course, it will want to put its, the best foot forward, foot forward. And so we will capitalize on our situation to explain away the shortcomings to the best we can. I don't blame them for attempting to do that. Any business will do that. And that is why there's a regulator. The regulator will listen to you, listen to other players, and decide that, look, this is it. Is this what you say is not accurate? Let's listen to the um, former minister for energy, um, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe. He spoke this week. Uh, now minister for energy, right. He spoke to former minister for education, rather. He spoke to the press and has appeared to have angered many people. But this is what Dr. Kwabna Donko is saying is not exactly accurate. The energy sector, the current power cuts. Some people are saying that you made mention of this. You use this as a campaign against John Mahama. And now we are experiencing worse, a worse situation under, under um, President Akufuado. Would it reflect in the 2024 election? Would it be um, something that people will stand on to vote? If you are comparing four years, four years, MPP administration, energy sector is 300 times better than John Mahama. And we are still experiencing doom so. Nobody has said we haven't. I'm just saying, it's far much better than Joe Mama ever did. You do admit that there's doom so. That is the word you used. I have never used that word. I 
promised you that we are going to work on it. And it's not a work that is a single event. It's a process. And we'll continue to work on it for the energy sector to become better. Have you heard of calls for a timetable? Ask those who want it to bring it. They should bring the timetable. If, they, if there is, I, have, I haven't seen any timetable. So when my people are calling for I it. say bring a timetable, what do you mean? The ECG says that there is no timetable coming. Why do you want to bring a timetable? What purpose? Why, why, why would somebody get up and wish evil or bad for the country? So it's not a situation they can have a timetable to. The minister says, ECG says, if you listen to him, right. he says, ECG says, he's not saying. Mm -hmm. And it, to start with, it's not the minister's responsibility to issue a timetable or not to issue. But you are saying ECG is being it's, untruthful? Yes, I'm saying that it's not the minister's responsibility. Mm -hmm. It is the responsibility of PURC. They have the mandate to demand for one. And they have demanded for one. So as for the minister, what the minister is saying, um, it's like on the sidelines. Because we must be a country if it took of PURC, law and order. If you took PURC as a court, courts can get it wrong anyway. Well, if, so, if a court so gets, their response is if, that. If, if a court gets it wrong, don't you go for appeal? So they, have, go to appeal. they have issued their response in terms of the compliance. And they are saying ultimately that there is stable national grid. You see, are they responsible for the grid? Are they responsible for the grid? You are not. Gridco is the one responsible for the national grid. And Gridco, Gridco will ask you that, look, this is the amount of power available today. So knock off 200 megawatts at peak. If you don't, Gridco, in charge of the systems control center, will decide to knock you off. Other than that, there will be a national meltdown, a systems meltdown. And if they know to be, if you are proactive, they ask you to knock off 200, and you do it, it's smoother. If you don't do it, Gridco will not allow this, uh, will not allow a systems meltdown. And so they will just look at your biggest bulk distribution point that can give them the 200 and knock it off you, mm. for you. So um, this is not new. So hold on briefly. Ben Boachi, thank you very much for joining us on Newsfile. Hello, Ben. Ben, please unmute your mic. Yes, um, thank you for having me. And good morning to honorable members in the right. studio. Right. So what do you know? Is the ECG being untruthful to Ghanaians? Um, yeah, I think uh, it's been explained time and again that, you know, this is not a situation where you can actually hide uh, the truth. And when the power goes out, everybody experiences it. Uh, beyond that, the people who are working across the industry, uh, majority of them, you can say 99% of them are Ghanaians. All right, so at every level, there is information flow, and we can see what is happening in the system. And to the extent that people would deliberately shift the burden or, or the actual situation to uh, different events, uh, it's, it's quite intriguing, and we struggle to appreciate what is actually happening uh, in the system. We do know that there is a generation shortfall, and everybody is in, in the power sector is trying to run away from that fact. Nobody wants to communicate that we have a generation shortfall, uh, which is accounting for a, a, you know, load being shared. And I don't understand why that struggle. Um, on the ECG side, we have a contract with ECG. Every consumer has a contract with ECG. Not Gridco, not VRA, not IPPs. They are supposed to give us power um, and provide power for, or in most cases, what we have paid for, because we're using uh, prepayment uh, uh, meters. And they have to deliver. There is no excuse telling us that, you know, it is grid code to blame, it is uh, IPP to blame. You have to give us power, you know. And grid code also has been quiet uh, all this while, though they are the system operators, and they know that for it over 
you know, almost three months now, they have been deficit. And that deficit has to be communicated. And ECG uh, wouldn't be the one to communicate it. They should communicate to the public that there is deficit. You know, they also have the duty to let the country know that we are experiencing, you know, generation shortfall, and therefore we cannot give to ECG what uh, uh, would be optimal for them to serve uh, the country with. But for everybody to be quiet and try to massage the obvious truth, uh, it's incredible, really, to appreciate. On the 11th of March, this is what the ECG said. It said that uh, it had noticed, noticed that 630 distribution transformers within communities across their operational areas have been identified to uh, be full to capacity due to increased demand. This situation may result in blown fuses and broken conductors, causing outages, especially during the peak load period, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. in the affected areas. We wish, however, to assure our customers that transformer upgrading and new projects are ongoing to relieve these customers, uh, these transformers, to ensure a more reliable power supply. Customers within the, those areas and communities should therefore report any localized outages or voltage fluctuations to the ECG call center. And they provided numbers. Is this a situation you say they can provide a, load shed, a, a timetable on for the affected areas? No, if transfer, transformers are overloaded, you change them. Um, you can switch them around. So if you have a competent brief of what your operational area is, uh, if my area is overloaded and another area is underutilized, you can switch the transformers. Uh, and these are incidences that you can actually tell the consumer ahead of time, that we know that these specific areas we're experiencing overloading, and then you move in to technically assess if you don't have uh, transformers uh, in, in your warehouse, you then need to see how you can move some of the transformers around to be able to meet the load. Because if assuming that they are correct, that there is power and they cannot distribute, that is even terrible because the power has to be paid for once it's generated. And if you have power energizing the uh, transmission infrastructure and the distribution company cannot distribute because of these uh, challenges and inability to smartly move around transformers and get things done, then we are losing much more money uh, you know, in that respect. Um, but again, uh, we are told by, you know, pool, which is the utility, uh, as, uh, uh, you know, tra a union that they have so many transformers that are across the, the entire operational area of ECG and 630 wouldn't be enough to actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, ex help make us experience the kind of uh, doom so that we are seeing around. So, it, ex you know, what these uh, technical people are actually saying is that the load shedding that we're experiencing cannot solely be attributed to uh, the so-called overloading of uh, transformers that we are seeing across uh, uh, ECG's operational area. So it comes back to that conversation, even if you have those challenges. How much of the load shedding that we are seeing is affected by the obvious um, uh, you know, generation shortfall <laughs> that we have? which is not being communicated to us, but we do know that on the average, we're shedding 300, sometimes even 600 megawatts, and we have to cut uh, all the exports to be able to meet uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the demand in country. So those are, for me, the significant issues that we have to address. And we are seeing 2012 actually replaying, where we started not communicating what the actual problem was. When gas was not flowing, we thought we could turn on the turbines uh, in Akosombo just to make sure that there is power when we needed to manage uh, the flow of the water. Um, some of the power plants that could use liquid fuel were just run uh, for a longer period of time. They missed maintenance shadows. And then the problem kept escalating and compounding. We want to avoid that kind of situation. So let's communicate the truth now and begin to address them and manage the situation so that we don't compel the system to stretch itself beyond uh, what it actually can. What Gridco is actually doing 
it's not the most optimal thing to do where they are just constantly monitoring uh you know the demand pattern and shutting down the feeders when ecg is not acting to actually shadow uh the load it's not appropriate i mean if the engineers slip at any time then some feeders can cause a lot of problems in, mm. in localities and the system can actually be collapsed all right if they don't annually so we need to have a proper plan right and that's Right, Dr. Dr. Donko, I come back to you. The Public Utility Workers Union. To give you the exact data for the 11th. Okay, hold on a minute, because this is tied to the issue he raised. The Public Utility Workers Union of TUC Ghana issued a statement two days ago, and they said, ECG being transparent, informed customers of 630 distribution transformers being full to capacity within its operational areas. It was stated that the situation may cause blown fuses and cracked conductors during peak periods. The replacement and upgrade of such transformers have been part and parcel of its operations since time immemorial. But it has never led to public agitation, which has turned into a national outcry with the shout of a load shedding timetable. Indeed, ECG has about 33,000 distribution transformers within its network. Thus, even if the 630 transformers are overloaded, that cannot be the cause of the recent erratic power supply throughout the country. It is worthy of note that at the time the bulk supply points are dumped or ECG is asked to pick limited load power supply transmitted to ECG is far less than what is available. This is a question that the system operator needs to answer. On the 11th of March, as you stated, off-peak, ECG was asked to share 150 megawatts. Off-peak. Peak, they were asked to share 450 megawatts. So this cannot be transmitters. This is from the Systems Control Center. They were being asked to share because of what? Yeah, because of inadequate supply of power. And inadequate supply due to what? First of all, there is the issue of fuel. And the fuel issue is also premise on liquidity. Basically, we don't have the money to pay, to pay for fuel. We are lucky that in 2024, about 80% of our fuel is domestic gas. If we had the situation that we had in 2014, 2015, where all of our gas was imported, the situation would have been five times worse. So first of all, we don't have the money to pay for fuel. Secondly, there is a capacity limitation as we speak. Tico is operating with one turbine instead of the combined cycle. TAPCO is doing the same. Ameri has been decommissioned. So there is unavailability of a number of plants. Contema plant, in the absence of gas, has to run on diesel. Diesel is far more expensive than even light crude oil that we're complaining about. So there is that problem. Let's admit, as Ben says, let's admit we have a problem. Once we all admit we have a problem, collectively, we can look at how do we resolve this issue short term, medium term, long term. However, we've been trapped by, the, by our politics. The politics of excess capacity, the politics of wasting, the politics of that. To the extent that one of the major challenges we're going to have going forward is the need to drive down efficiency and also drive down cost. As we said, the Contema plant has been working for the last seven years. It is still a simple cycle. And therefore, the cost per generation, unit of generation, is higher than it ought to be if we had done the combined cycle. All right. Let's listen to a couple of uh, people and the concerns they have raised about the circumstances, particularly um, key installations like health facilities. Richie Selovey, a general secretary 
of the Ghana Medical Association. We've also heard from uh, Dr. Obute, who is a research analyst. So let's listen to these uh, gentlemen and what they have to say about the circumstances. It is very important that we put the issue into context. It's not about when only somebody dies, but people may even suffer irreparable damage uh, just because the power has been off. I'm sure you read the Tema General Hospital statement where they said they took two hours to solve the problem. When it comes to life and death situations, two hours is too long a time. And so it's important that we discuss this issue in that context. Of course, our members across the country are reporting various challenges. Some have had to use torches to complete surgeries during procedures. Some have had to revert to the paper systems because the systems were down. And so uh, it's a challenge. It's a big challenge that is happening across the country. And we need to immediately begin to discuss ways to address that. For us, as an association, we are not bothered about what people want to call it. So whatever you want to call it, we don't really bother about that. What is important is that for critical installations as hospitals, they need to know the timing of these outages, especially where we know that they are being done at certain times and so that they can plan. We've transmitted whatever it is we have to the commissioners. I cannot give a deadline or time to the commissioners. So if the commissioners come out and tell us that by this time we are doing A, B, C, D, I'm more than willing to come out and communicate that to the public. We got information from ECG that it is as a result of 630 transformers that they were injecting into the system. So we said, give us information on that. Proactively, proactively would you reach out to the grid core? to find out what's happening from their end? Because they're also part of this value chain. If they can't supply, ECG can distribute. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That once we have this information now that this is the situation, we are going to rope in Great Co. as well and talk to Great Co. and see exactly what is going on at the Great Co. end. Very, very well managing under the circumstances. Oh, you're working today. You have some surgeries, but you can't be sure about, you know, this power. Sometimes you're in surgery and the lights go off. And so it affects even planning. Some surgeries can wait, but if you have a cancer surgery, you cannot wait for too long. So we, that's why, as a medical association, we are calling for shadow. If we knew, they would say, okay, all our surgeries, to, we are going to have power on Tuesday. Mm. So book surgeries. Patients come on admission Monday, we do surgeries for you on Tuesday. Mm. But I'm working in the dark. I book you for Wednesday. Wednesday, there's no power. Gen set is working all right. But to what extent, mm. you know, Jen said it's supposed to be a stopgap. Light goes off, it comes in quickly, so you, there's no break, and the lights come. But, you know, the exception is becoming the rule. We wish and pray things get better for our country. Wish soon. Right, so you just heard uh, Dr. Promise, um, Seth Ogan, who is consultant and, uh, at the facility and spe uh, fertility specialist, um, SHIP. Healthcare, and he's vice president of uh, FESO. And you also had the general secretary of the Public Utilities Union, as well as um, Dr. Selemi, the general secretary of the Ghana Medical Association. Now, Atacha, because of where you sit in parliament on these matters, the two of you, we, we can be blessed beyond this to have the two of you here help us and help our audience to appreciate these matters you had something to say about the question of the timetable some say this is why we love atachia he won't do politics when it doesn't have to be politics but do you believe that you appreciated the matters thoroughly to be able to make this comment let's hear you and come back okay It is imperative that if you have a challenge, whether it's a matter of generation deficit or a financial challenge, let the people of Ghana know that there's this challenge and this is the timetable. So people will plan around the challenge you are facing to make it like a, it's a fetish that we don't know whether today I'll have power in my area or I won't have power how people iron their clothes to get to work and the rest of it, and all the challenges. I don't think 
that's the way to go. It's so, unprofessional and it's too messy for comfort. Yes. Well, I think um, there is a problem. And be careful that you don't export the problem to the people who are supposed to have the benefit of your service. That will be double trouble. The people who are supposed to have the benefit of your service, I mean, should be informed. That's what I'm saying. Whether it's a generation deficit, financial challenges, or whatever your problem is, you owe it to your own integrity to tell the consumers, that look, I'm having these problems. This is how we want to ameliorate your, your trouble. So I'm informing you in advance that I'm, you, you won't have power from this hour to the other hour. You won't have power from this day or whatever it is. A very credible timetable having regard to your own challenges. So they plan their lives. But if you say that, oh, I'm having a, a problem and I will show you how you also will have a modicum of comfort by way of a timetable. I'm afraid that is a very, very clumsy arrangement we shouldn't encourage because you give the power, you distribute the power. You know your distribution challenges. They don't know. So you know how you distribute the power, whether you want to, I mean, supply power to this area, maybe Akusumo, Chebi, whatever. You should have a plan. Because if you are not careful, now what is happening is that um, let me treat the people who consume electricity as I please because I'm having challenges. This is where I believe it will not... In complying with the orders of the PURC, they have indicated how many notices they have issued over the period. Where are they? Several of them. Well... Informing the people about the situation and how they are making efforts to resolve them. That is not treating the people with impunity, is it? Well, I, I am not aware of I mean, what they've done before this I mean, uh, demand for timetable or stress strongly. That is my point of view. If the people had a timetable, why would they be disturbing your peace regarding the timetable and all the kind of problems that I mean, is associated with the timetable? Where is the timetable? Now I'm, I'm, I'm educated that the timetable is, is, is out there for people to see. Let's do proper education and give information as to the timetable. And then people will plan their lives. I'm listening to a doctor who is saying that for some good reason, uh, surgeries are not safe. In the first instance, I was going to tell the doctor that you need um, a generator in a hospital setup. No dispute about it. Automatic generator where when you don't have power from an electricity company of Ghana, it switches automatically. Well, in the middle of a surgery, if you are saying that, oh, the power source, I'm not sure, and you are playing lottery with the lives of people. So I crave your kind of knowledge that if there is any hospital in Ghana, one, one, one uh, important machine that a hospital should have, we should have automatic turn on from an uh, ECG power source, and then it kicks in directly. It's a generator. He spoke about the situation where the response is that it took about is it two minutes for them to be able to switch over. Well, and uh, somebody had alleged that a child died as a result of that. And they came to explain that you can't trace the death to the outage. And he says two minutes time is very critical when somebody, you know, is well, well, under right the knife. Now, right now, they have an understanding of what they do in the hospitals and the sensitivity of the matter. We have automatic... Precisely. I mean, I mean, I'm a switch. Excuse me to say I don't want to talk about private matters. So if you want to be antiquated, I'm afraid it's a joke. So off and on. Because you are doing something which is life and death. They talk about cost and cost of fuel. Well, what is superior to life? So life is life. You can't negotiate life. I don't see why you say in the name of cost, you have the most important machine in your backyard so that when you are doing an operation and it's a life and death issue, you save lives. So please, what we are trying to argue 
We don't have an excuse. It is imperative that those who are looking after lives, whatever the situation, even when we are in normal times, and we don't even have them, so mm. a very critical machine, uh, which is a generator, should be in the background. And it should be automatic so that you won't lose life. But let me tell you one of the things I believe is happening that we all agree. I do not believe we should play jokes with the electricity generation. We shouldn't play jokes with it. That is why the Committee on Mines and Energy, we are very serious about this matter. We want to converge and bring all the individuals in the value chain for us to interrogate the matter properly. That we know what the problems really are. And then the experts that some of them, some of the members are, we will be able to prefer, prefer solutions to some of these things. And then we come to terms with it. When you hide facts, uh, it will come to hurt you. You cannot hide a fact which touches on the lives of the people. I'm being educated that um, ECG is the end factor in this whole arrangement. They, they distribute the power. ECG is woefully undercapitalized. I'm being educated. Now, if you know the resources of ECG, for them to play their role as electricity generator in the realm called Ghana. Distributor. Distributor. They are undercapitalized. What is worse, I'm being educated, that in terms of distribution of power, there is a factor of about, uh, somebody was saying, is even more than 30% of losses in distributing power. What kind of commercial arrangement is somebody operating that you can lose 30% of your product and still survive. These are critical matters we shouldn't joke with. And that's why we need to really sit down and bring ECG to the proper place mm. and then begin to find out what are you doing critically to stop this. Mm. Then let's come to the common pool, the cash water. Hold on there about the key installations like the hospitals. Yes. Where the two of you suggest there should be automatic you know, switch yes. to alternative power. Yes. Um, the, uh, the Terman Hospital I was referring to, it took them two hours, actually, not two minutes. But don't you appreciate also that state hospitals have issues with, with money? With money. They are t talking about buying fuel and you talking about the, the molding you know, way to change when you Sweet. lose power. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, if you look at the issue of money, I believe that there are some critical areas that you should apply money. Whatever budget you have, they are very serious, if you like, integral part of your work. That should not be subordinated to money issues. For example, I can, I can tell you that it is almost like non-negotiable that a major hospital, if the government cannot come in, some arrangement must be found for them to go for a good loan, mm. stretch over time, for them to get one gadget, the absence of which will be life and death. Okay. So if people don't want to look at things from the perspective of the sensitivity that they are having, and we we'll always go back to the money issue. Mm. It's going to hurt us. They I'll, engineer I'll, a solution. I'll return to you on where you were going to. That's the cash waterfall. Yes. Right. But Ben, why are we demanding now that there should be a timetable when, as the ECG explained in complying with the orders of the PURC, that it said that the practice over the years for transformer injection works is to send notices on planned maintenance to customers. ECG does not give notices for individual transformer injections. Upon issuance of notices for planned maintenance, ECG goes ahead to carry out substation maintenance works, underground cable faults, fault repairs, overhead line fault repairs, damage pole replacement, transformer injection etc. Why is it that this time we are saying that they shouldn't do what they have been known to do over the years? 
See, I think I'm not a lawyer, but the ignorance of the law is even not funny at all at this point, where um, PRC's regulation actually stipulates that before you take my light for plan maintenance, you should let me know three days ahead of time. So it's not, I don't even need to know what transformer it is. <laughs> you just need to tell me that I wouldn't have lights because you're going to take my light three days ahead of time. Um, so for, you know, easy to now explain why they cannot tell the consumer that they have a shadow maintenance and they need to replace an equipment. Uh, it's it really, you know, sense against the law. No, that they have they, said, that they have said, they've given notice of that. But it is about what is be, being called for a load shedding timetable. I think that is different from informing the public that we are going to do this work. That's one they have told us, right? No, I think so. There are, if you look at the directive from PRC, they were very specific. They said, give us the location of all the transformers that are overloading, yes. all right? The transformers that are having problems including the GPS coordinates mm -hmm. of those uh, 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 transformers, so people can know where they fall. And that helps to inform the uh, customer what challenges are localized, so that they can expect some of these uh, problems. And that is part of enforcing uh, 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 you know, the regulation and the law. Mm -hmm. And if you are not doing that, then you're actually violating the law, mm -hmm. because you already you know the 630 uh, transformers that you say are overloaded. So let the people know, so that when my light goes off, I can just go and see if there's ECG worker working there uh, on, on the transformer, or something is being done on the transformer. They have refused to do that. You know, and that's where the problem really is. Wow. Um, you need to let the public know if you're going to take their light. If you can't control it because you know that the transformers are overloaded, it tells you that your, my light can go off anytime. And therefore, having that information also help me, helps me to plan, uh, you know, not knowing when that light will go off, but I know that at least there's a, a problem with my transformer and I need to expect that the light to go off at some point. And those who don't have that problem also know that when their light goes off, that it cannot be attributed to the transformer uh, being faulty. So that kind of information has to go out to the consumer and let the consumer know. Mm. Thank you very much. And uh, I return to you on your issue of the uh, catch waterfall mechanism matter what about it how does it also contribute to what we are experiencing i'm being educated that uh, the cash waterfall mechanism is not by legislation it was a policy of government so it filtered through cabinet and it's become like a rule of thumb for the way ecg should manage issues but i'm being told also that first of all there's such a revenue shortfall at the end of uh, uh, the job being done by ECG. Now, what comes into the common kitty and is being distributed is not enough to compensate for the services they are rendering. And I'm being educated, which is very, very serious, that if you press, if you press the issue of the cash waterfall mechanism to the point of saying that um, if, um, give this to this, give this to this, uh, first of all, the independent power producers should have it first and the flow of it and the rest of it. What is left for ECG to function is negligible. That's what I'm being told. And if we are not careful and we, we, we comply fully with the, uh, the cash waterfall mechanism, ECG will come at us because it doesn't generate enough money to be operational. This matter our committee wants to interrogate because we wouldn't want to have a policy uh, which is so stringent that um, ECG, with all the challenges, complying fully with the cash waterfall mechanism, will run aground, and then we have double trouble. So I am very much concerned about some of these matters which are coming to the fore, and we need to look at it critically. If we are not careful, I respect what uh, the regulator is doing. The regulator is actually a creature of law. If you pay regard to Act uh, um, uh, 538, there's nothing that uh, PURC is doing which is untoward. But be very careful that in a mechanical approach to the issues, um, the distributor uh, will not collapse. So let's look at it 
from these perspectives. Mm. Uh, 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 in respect of that, just a small one before we proceed. You see their compliances. Of course, there is, I think, one or two that the deadline is not yet kicked in. Mm. It's in April 2 or yes. so, thereabout, or 8. Are they justified if they decided that, look, we have, we have contracts mm. with certain people, with certain entities, and we cannot be making certain disclosures under this cash waterfall mechanism because we may be, um, as it were, breaching the law in that regard. Well, I do not know of any disclosure to a regulator that would hurt you mm. with the greatest of respect. You see, because I do not see any decent regulator um, using the confidential uh, material to your disadvantage. Perhaps what they want to do is to peruse certain issues and, and proffer advice. Okay. But if we credit the regulator with decency that the information I'm exacting from you, I want to use it for probably to help you perform better, then I don't see why it should be a problem at all. All right. So they shouldn't, they shouldn't withhold critical information from the regulator because they will offend against the law. Mm. Thank you very much. Yes, Dr. Kamravanko, if you are talking about that or something else. You see, I am extremely worried about the perception of this cash waterfall mechanism. Mm. I'm extremely worried. The cash waterfall mechanism is an administrative to a managerial tool to manage a situation. And what is the situation? The situation is that, one, we are under recovering cost. Ordinarily, and that was why I stated earlier on that ECG is a limited liability company. That is so. When a limited liability company... Though is wholly under, owned by the state. Yes. yes. It's undercapitalized. Mm. The shareholder has an obligation to inject capital. No dispute about it. And yes, currently the state is doing, injecting some money, but not as capital, but to support operations. The Ghanaian state is paying about 250 million CDs every month for fuel because of the contracts for fuel supply. And that is still not adequate. And therefore, there is a debt burden exceeding $1.5 billion on the sector. The debt burden is that Ghana gas is not being paid by VRA. VRA is not also being paid by ECG, so it's cascading. There is that dead burden. But we are lucky, at least we own the gas, apart from what we have to pay to ENI and what we have to pay for TALO. Mm. If we were totally dependent on end gas, that would have been a disaster. So the, we should not, and the cash uh, waterfall mechanism was discussed and agreed upon by all parties. And therefore, if your allocation, and it's about prioritization, the number one priority is fuel supply, mm. pay IPPs. Then we come to the entities who will need money for the administrative running. If you are saying that I choose to pay a particular fuel supplier as against those in the pool, then it, it raises issues. ECG has a very difficult situation. You are under recovering costs. Remember a few years ago, even for fuel supply, mm. uh, petroleum products, any time the BDCs brought fuel and government didn't give them the right price, there was under recovery that the state paid. Right. So we are basically under recovering costs. We have, we have two things. One, we have to drive down costs by being far more efficient along the value chain. All right. To re-examine the impact of our currency, mm -hmm. the depreciation of the CD at 13.12 today, even at the interbank rate. And when all your payables for fuel are dollar denominated, yes. <laughs> your payables to IPPs are dollar denominated, and you have so managed or mismanaged your economy that or not, not withdraw economy and say your monetary policy that it is impacting 
on physical depreciation of your currency, mm. we are going to have this problem. Ben, one minute. What, where, where do we go from here? I think the power sector, you know, challenges are deepening. And the earlier, you know, we communicated that and found a way to deal with it, uh, the better it will be for all of us. And I have indicated time and again that, you know, the responsibility of the state to pay for the inefficiency is actually hurting everybody, hurting the Ghanaian public, where we're billion uh, dollars every year is spent to pay for electricity bills, uh, you know, that are not generating any uh, uh, impact for the Ghanaian people. And that, for me, is something we have to address uh, to ensure that we can rather divert those resources into development projects uh, and fund the education, the health infrastructure that we actually need, rather than paying for uh, electricity that has been consumed by somebody else, mm. uh, you know. So um, we need to get the, the, the utilities communicating the problem uh, properly to us and get Ghanaians to plan. Because at this point also, it's difficult for government to now go and say, we are going to take charge of every uh, deficit in fuel supply. Because uh, the budget may not be able to accommodate that at this point. And therefore, facing reality and planning uh, for it so that we can improve over time and be able to collect the revenues uh, and take care of you know fuel. Fuel supply to the power sector must translate into revenue All right. uh, that can be recycled uh, in the industry. All right. Thank you very much. Ben Boache is uh, with ASEP, Africa Center for Energy Policy. Um, of course, I am picking a few of your messages here and then we'll end on the note of hearing... Uh, Napo and others again on why it may not be useful not to have a timetable. Uh, this one from Mark in the USA. He says, I had a dental surgery done at Kolebu about eight years ago. The lights went off right after the surgery and the doctors used the lights on their cell phones to clean me up. They had a generator, but there was no fuel in it. Atacha is talking about automatic generators or switches in hospitals in Ghana? Okay. Well, people have them anyway. <laughs> Frank Anderson Jr. says that taxpayers' money spent recklessly on that pit, i.e. supposed National Cathedral. Well, we're told that uh, stones will be raised and raise the money to pay for it. We're living in biblical times, right? Uh, says it's enough to acquire state-of-the-art generators for government hospitals. We just don't value human life. Simple. Uh, acquire generators with the, with the cathedral money. Your churches will not agree with you. <laughs> right. And oh my God. Let's be frank about it. They play the ostrich all the time and they get into the politics of all of these issues and put pressure on the politicians to sometimes also do what is not useful to, for all of us. Now, listen to this. And we are taking a break on this note. We return to check whether the speaker will call the House back or the NPP will force, MPP MPs will force the House to be recalled because the injunction that the speaker was talking about the application that did not exist even at the time he was referring to has been quickly dispatched. And thanks to Dr. Kwabna Donko, who is MP Pro East and former Minister for Power.
demonstration organized. If sensitivity of government, this is not to talk about government. We don't advocate for a regime change this way. We are going to vote next year and we are going to vote them out massively. That is good governance. That is partisanship. We are going to democratically remove Obama from power. Not do this demonstration. But the demonstration is to demonstrate to Obama and Ghanaians that what is going on is bad. You, if you, you are, if you are feeling the heat, if you, you are feeling the heat, if you are feeling the heat, like Ghanaians are feeling the heat, if you are buying electricity and they are having it for free, if your salary, you are spending 60% of your salary on electricity bills, then you understand what I'm suffering. Yeah. I am suffering. Yeah.